What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is The Locker Room, episode three of season eight of the GBA, the San Francisco Giantes, are team building for Crimson Seabad, aka Chase, and his Detroit Steel Wings. Uh, Chase and I have been in the GBA together since uh, season four. Um, so he and I go way back. Uh, we've been division rivals once before. Uh, and we're going to do it again, and this is a pretty big week for us. Uh, we started off with really hard matches uh, against Chimpact and uh, Envy, and we ended up 0-2 after those. Uh, thank you guys for the love on the videos, by the way. Even though I, I copped a, uh, a loss, and a lot of times I, I don't read my comments after a loss because I internalize it a lot. Uh, it, sometimes it's, it's hard for me. Uh, it puts me in a really negative mindset sometimes if it's a particularly bad loss. Uh, but I thought this was, like, I was proud of myself for that game, and it seems like you guys were too, so I appreciate the love and the support that I'm seeing on those. Um, so, I, I honestly, I really do. The, I'm, I feel the love when you guys <laughs> put it out there, so appreciate that. But we got to look at getting some Ws now. It's all great and fine getting patted on the back when I lose, but now I need to actually start pulling some Ws. Chase is 1-1. One and one. And I am 0 and 2, and we're going to be battling for a wild card spot, it, it would appear, because MV's now 3 and 0, uh, off to a really good start, looking great. And I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to front. The guy's got a phenomenal record, has gone almost lossless since he's joined the GBA pretty much. So, uh, and yet somehow always finds a way to lose in the finals. So, my main point here. If I'm chasing a wild card spot, I gotta beat Chase first. This has got to be the the game that really starts it all off. And so I I prepped uh, and I'm I'm ready to show you guys the team. But to remind you guys of my roster and because there was a change, I'm gonna go over my draft one more time. We got Mew, Mega Scizor, Blacephalon, Toxapex, Doug Trio, Shaman, to uh, Haxorus, Ditto, Rotom, Fan, Slurpuff, and Archeops. Now the big change I had. Uh, since last week was that I got rid of Chestnut and replaced it with Shaman. A couple of big reasons for that. Um, a large part of me drafting Chestnut was as a dark type answer and almost every time I was going up against a dark type mom it wouldn't have really walled it. So for what it did for my team Spikes are nice, but I don't have a rapid spinner and defog is my primary removal option. So it Not that my team is particularly weak to rocks because it's not but if I'm gonna be spamming defog of my own I'm I'm kind of hurting the hazard situation on my behalf a little bit so I, I just felt more like the spikes pale in comparison to how strong Shaman can be as a grass type. Uh, I really like that Shaman is mono type. I think if you're gonna be a grass dual type, it, it struggles if you're gonna be uh, quad weak to something, especially quad weak to something where Aerial Ace is such an easy pack. I mean, it's a TM move and almost everybody learns it. So, it... The... Problems I was encountering with Chestnut seemed to just, they, they wouldn't go away. And so I felt as though I needed to make a change there, and Shaman felt like a really good pickup for me. And uh, just in practicing, um, it, it seems like it was a good move. So that's my big move there. Shaman uh, can run support sets, offensive and defensive options a little better than Chestnut. Um, Chestnut does have access to Belly Drum, which is great, but I already have a Belly Drummer, so it doesn't, you know, there's there's a, there's a give and a take there. Uh, Shaman can go physical, it can go special, and I just, I really like the options that it has, uh, more so than Chestnut, who has a lot of weaknesses that can be, from my point of view, capitalized on. And I've used Chestnut before, and I had similar issues with it last time, but I, I blamed it on the team when I drafted it again this time. Uh, but now I'm realizing it's just, it's just not for me. For what I needed it for, uh, it wasn't accomplishing that goal. And the goal it's also supposed to accomplish, being a, um, a grass type, there were barriers to it actually accomplishing that as effectively as I would have liked it to. So Shaman's going to be there for that. Um, and looking at my opponent's team, we are going up against Thunderous, Jirachi, 
Infernape, Suicune, Don Fen, Cafagragus, Lycanroc Dusk, Mega Beedrill, Grand Bull, Kangaskhan, and Tangela. And I've, for those of you who are familiar with my tiering system, what I tier at the top are mons that I know are big threats, that I know I have to prepare for, and that I'm pretty sure, almost positive, are coming. The next row are Pokemon that fit a very important role on his team and are very likely brings. The third row of Pokemon I wouldn't be surprised if he brings, and the last row of Pokemon I do think I would be surprised if he brings. Um, so looking at this, uh, his team seems to lend itself to a, a style of prep that I think will be good for my team. And so I'm gonna show you guys uh, what I have in the team builder this week. We're bringing DMX the Toxapex, Toys R Us the Haxorus, uh, Home Yoner the uh, Mew, Dig Dug the Dug Trio, Tefiti the Shaman, and Head Go Boom the Blacephalon. So let's start off with Blacephalon. Um, Blacephalon running a Choice Scarf again this week. Beast Boost, Shadow Ball, Flamethrower, Mind Blown, and Trick with enough speed EVs to outspeed a max speed jolly or timid jirachi in case he's running scarf rachi so i will outspeed a scarf rachi uh, as 107 is the base speed for head go boom so i can't outspeed a plus speed uh, infernape um so if the infernape is scarf uh, or some set that accomplishes uh, getting a plus one speed boost then uh, i know that head go boom will be outsped and everybody knows Infernape can carry Earthquake, so it is a potential risk there. So Head Go Boom uh, would appreciate things to deal with the Infernape. Looking at the rest of his team, Head Go Boom can really punch holes in this thing. Uh, I've run some preliminary calcs, and he does incredibly well against Jirachi. He can... He can't break... Suicune, but he can certainly do a hefty amount of damage to it if it's uh, not the right set. Uh, he can beat Thunderous. He can... Uh, weirdly, Beedrill actually doesn't do too bad against him. Uh, Dawn Fen won't be liking the special attacks. Uh, Cafagragus won't be liking the super effective stab. Uh, Infernape... Uh, is faster, but can't really switch into me. Grand Bull, again, can't really switch into me. Lycanroc Dusk can take some hits okay, um, but not super well. And then the Tangela and the Kangaskhan, um, it kind of depends on their sets a little bit more, but they can't do... They're not a huge threat to Blacephalon. So looking at that, looking at kind of uh, one of Blacephalon's potential paths to victory... Uh, really involves coming in when it's safe to, uh, when I can set up a, a nice switch into Blacephalon when I'm not particularly threatened, and really punching holes or sweeping and cleaning up late game when I have the speed advantage. Um, we're going to look at uh, Tefiti next, because I think Tefiti is amazing in this matchup. And I've changed his set a few times. The one I landed on was a Life Orb Seed Seed Flare, Earth Power, Hidden Power, Ice, Rest set. Seed Flare, of course, Stab, very high power with a very amazing potential side effect, 40% chance uh, to lower their special defense by two stages, which could be supremely helpful for me. Now, 85% accuracy is not the best, and we know that I love to miss things when it counts, but Tefiti is a very good switch in to his highest tier mons that he drafted. It's great against Thunderous Eye because Thunderous Eye doesn't really have great flying options. Now, Thunderous Eye, let's remember, is his Z mon user. So it could be running Supersonic Sky Strike on Fly, uh, which would probably be its best stab for me. Uh, and I can, you know, scout for that a little bit. Um, but. It's, it's something I can play around uh, if, I, if I'm worried that it, it has it. But it also... It's weird. I don't know how to, how to talk about Thunderous because it can run so many sets. It can really try and take advantage of its support options through having uh, access to Prankster. So I know that Nasty Plot, uh, Sub, 
T-Wave, Defog are all options for it to be packing. And so I need to be aware of that. But at the same time, I have answers to that. Uh, and that's pretty much the only Mon that really has a strong matchup against Shaman uh, other than Infernape. But Shaman does well with this set against the Jirachi. It does well against the Infernape. It does great against the Suicune. Uh, obviously, it's very good against the Dawn Fan. Cafagragus, the right set could be annoying to Tefiti, but uh, doesn't really threaten me much. Lycanroc, I've stabbed for it. Um, Beedrill, it's very good against me, but I have great Beedrill answers. And then the latter of the three Mon just kind of... I mean, like, Grand Bull could have super effective hits for me, but has pretty poor special attack, so I could take advantage of that. Kangaskhan's gonna be Kangaskhan. Um, could be rocking just a pretty generic offensive normal type set to just put some hurt on something. Could be running a wish support set. Uh, it is another Z Mon user for him, so Z coverage move. Could be that. Uh, with Kanga, you never really know, so you kind of got to play around that a little bit, and so I'm prepared to do that also. And then the Tangela, I have super effective HP Ice for it if it decides to come, but it can't really threaten me. It's pretty passive. So that's Tefiti. Uh, Dig Dug is going to be important this week, I think, for one reason or another. I don't think I see him lasting long in this fight. Uh, I have a Focus Sash on him, and I'm looking at Earthquake, Rock Tomb, Stealth Rock, and Memento. Now, I need... My idea here with Doug Trio is pretty much get in against Thunderous the first time I see it. And the reason for that is if he's going to pack Supersonic Sty Sky Strike and he's in against my Shaman, he's gonna click it. Um, because the alternative is he clicks Thunderbolt, which doesn't do a lot of damage to me, or he tries to set up against me and then he risks going down to my HP Ice, or taking a hefty amount even from the Resisted Seed Flare, or he pops off the Sky Strike right away. Now, Dig Dug can come in, tank that, outspeed him still um, with the investment that I have, and then I can either choose to Rock Tomb, try and take it out, or go for the Stealth Rock uh, right away. That, and that's like a worst case scenario, right? That's like he goes right away for the sky for Supersonic Sky Strike against Shaman, and I don't necessarily know that Shaman will be in against it. So, it, in a more likely situation, maybe he comes in against Toxapex or something, and uh, could click Volt Switch, knowing that he's got something like he might be packing HP Ice. A very common set for Thunderous, for example, just being dual stab HP Ice and then a setup move like Nasty Plot or something like that. He needs to be careful with setting up against me because he knows I have Ditto. And I love bringing Ditto. And he's got setup mons. In the last two games uh, that he's played this season, he has set up and tried to set up against his opponent. Uh, I'm not a great target for him to do that against me, um, but that's what Dig Dug's here for. If he tries anything fancy with the Thunderous, Dig Dug's gonna come in. I'm gonna decide whether or not I wanna get a hit off against it or get my Stealth Rocks up. If I Stealth Rock on a Switch, because uh, the Thunderous, of course, being flying type isn't trapped by Arena Trap, then great, I'm going to follow that up with a Memento, because a likely bring in against me would be the Dawn Fan, and if he's going to want to get a Rapid Spin off and I Memento away, he's got no target. And now I can bring in something that can set up, and I've got a couple of setup sweepers uh, this week, guys. Uh, so moving on to Home Yowner. Home Yowner running a... Um, uh, Sorry guys, I had to bring up another window to talk a little bit about the speed EVs and stuff. Um, 151 speed is the one that I get to on Home Yowner. That's uh, going to outspeed a max speed 252 Suicune. So if he's rocking an offensive Suicune, I'll still outspeed it. Uh, I'm running Psy Shock, Roost, Calm Mind, and Substitute. So the reason I'm doing this is that... There's not a ton of Mons on his team that immediately threaten Mew to the point that they can two-hit KO it. So I can roost off a lot of damage against some of his more passive Mon, especially things like the Tangela and the Dawn Fan. 
And the Cafagragus, even though it is super effective against me, if it's running a defensive set, it might have nothing more than like knockoff. And if that's the case, after I get knocked off once, uh, he kind of doesn't have a lot for me. So against a lot of these mons, I can set up substitutes, I can start popping off calm mines, and he doesn't have a dark type, so nothing on his team really to answer me at that point. The Jirachi, of course, could be running some kind of set that's capable of breaking my subs, and it could have four times resist against the Psy Shock, but then I have other options for dealing with the Jirachi. Um, and I do have a lot. I mean, Head Go Boom directly threatens it with immediacy. Tefiti doesn't mind a lot of moves that Jirachi typically packs and is packing Earth Power. Doug Trio can trap it and Earthquake it. Uh, and so the fact that it's four times resisting Psy Shock is kind of not a massive issue, to be honest. So I'm really looking at it that way, that this thing can threaten his entire team with neutral or super effective on my stab, with the only exception being um, Jirachi. It's his only psychic resist. So I think this is a positive opportunity for me to be kind of bulky, get in against something, get a couple of calm mines off, and see what he's got to stop me. Uh, biggest options for stopping that sweep would be Roar Suicune. Suicune doesn't have a ton of options that he can run this week. I mean, if he runs the wrong one, I counter it in another way. If he's running Roar Suicune, uh, he runs the risk of bringing in Tefiti, uh, which can immediately threaten it and doesn't really mind a, an Ice Beam unless it's an offensive set, but offensive Roar is kind of a weird bring. Um, he... <laughs> I mean, I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm being honest here. It's it's a tough set for him to deal with. Uh, I, I recognize that. And I think it's going to be something that I can really take advantage of if I can bring it in and start the setup against the correct Pokemon, especially if it's looking good for me and I can get it off with a Memento to force a switch turn one and really afford me the ability to start getting at the Calm Mind so that I can, if it's a special set Jirachi, I wall that after a couple of... Calm Minds, and I win a lot of Calm Mind Wars against other Calm Mind potential Mon on his team, because Psyshock's going to hit uh, on the physical side. Uh, so moving on, that's, I mean, it's a relatively standard set other than that. Uh, moving on to Toys R Us, we're hitting the 161 speed tier uh, with that, which is going to outspeed uh, Max Neutral Infernape. It's going to outspeed the um, positive Max Speed Kanga. It's going to outspeed Max Neutral Jirachi. Um, falls a little short of Lycanroc Dusk Max Neutral, but that's okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll live with that. Looking at this, actually, can I... I think I mapped this out, and I don't... Th I think I speed tie with Max Neutral Thunderous. Uh, and so I just didn't even try for it. Just kind of picked up the extra EVs where they lie. Running a Dragon Fang, Outrage, Earthquake, Poison Jab, and Dragon Dance. After a Dragon Dance, guys, this thing really does a number on his team. Uh, a plus one EQ can Oko Jirachi. A plus one Outrage will two hit KO a Suicune. A neutral Outrage will one hit KO Thunderous, one hit KO Beedrill. Um, a plus one Outrage will two hit KO Donphan, two hit KO Kofag. Uh, I can kill Infernape with anything at neutral. I can... The the Grand Bull um, is a good check, um, but doesn't match up well against a lot of the rest of my team. So he has to be careful for that. Uh, the Lycanroc Dusk, I Oko it with EQ or Outrage, and at plus one, I EQ the Kangaskhan... Or sorry, Outrage the Kangaskhan to, oh hit, to one hit KO. And Tangela is pretty much the only thing, and even at plus one, it's going to get two hit KO'd. So if I can get even uh, a plus one, plus one, his team is seriously threatened. I can just click Outrage, and he either has to start sacking things, uh, or, at best case scenario, exchange one threat for it. And the only things that are really going to be taking that, again, are the Tangela. Uh, he can't be switching in the Suicune against me, because Suicune's not going to be able to one-hit KO me with an Ice Beam, even if it's Modest Max. Um, if it's Modest 252... 
Uh, choice specs, it will kill me, but I don't think that's going to be the case. Uh, and I probably wouldn't be too callous with this setup situation. Like, I'm not just going to click it once on turn one and then just try and win the game with it. Uh, but it is a, a potential win con for me if I see the opportunity to get up a dragon dance and really punch holes through the team. Uh, and then DMX is Scald, Toxic Spike, Haze, Recover. Uh, looking to try and get up Toxic Spikes against this team once the uh, Beedrill is down, uh, which I think could be really helpful. Haze there, of course, if he is going to try and get any setup shenanigans going on. Um, I don't really see myself giving him too much of an opportunity to do that, uh, but he does have options on things like the Infernape, the Thunderous, uh, the Suicune and potentially the Jirachi. So, uh, looking at his team and looking at my potential path to victory with the team I have brought, I see Home Yowner potentially getting set up in the mid game and sweeping to victory. I see potentially Head Go Boom coming in if the team has been weakened to the point that Shadow Ball will start picking up kills. And it's off to the races once I get a couple of beast boosts if I'm out speeding things. So a couple of turns of scouting to see whether or not he has any Scarfers on his team. Uh, and Toys R Us, same kind of deal. If I can get up one Dragon Dance uh, with safety, like on a Force Switch, then I'm in a really good spot with uh, Haxorus also to either punch holes or, again, to win. He does have quite a lot of potential uh, priority on his team. So that's going to be something I'm going to have to look for. Uh, the Lycanroc Dusk has access to Sucker Puncher and Acceleroc. Uh, the Thunderous has Prankster options. Um, there's a couple of uh, Sucker Punch options on there too. Kongskun, of course. So there, there is priority on his team. But it's not like overwhelmingly powerful. You know, I don't see any extreme speeders. He's not technician boosted anything with priority, so I think I can rest a little easy in that regard, though I do need to be really careful of Lycanroc Dusk packing Sucker Punch if I'm trying to sweep with Blacephalon. So, do need to look at that a little bit, and if I do see a Lycanroc Dusk and he's sitting on it really defensively, uh, then Head Go Boom's probably going to be playing much more of a mid-game... Um, mid-game hole punching roll rather than a late game sweeper something i'm gonna have to analyze at the end game so what do you guys think of the team this week um i like i like defeaty a lot in this matchup uh, i like the regenerator rocky helmet combo on dmx toxapex can switch in really easily and get some chip off on his potential u-turners like jirachi and infernape um, it's a great switch into Grand Bull, although an Earthquake from Grand Bull is something I wouldn't love. The Earthquake from Infernape, um, I can tank relatively well, and it's not going to love being Scalded, I'll tell you that much. Uh, I can recover it off if he opts to go. If he was a setup option, then I'll have to play around that, but I do have a lot of things that outspeed it. Uh, so he can't set up and outspeed my speedy threats, and he can't tank hits from my speedy threats. Um, and be a setup mon. So I'm good in that regard. Rocky Helmet, great for chip against a lot of things. The Jirachi even will have a hard time breaking me with my defensive investment. Um, and I resist its, um, its Steel Stab, which is great. So I'm really liking those options. Great against Beedrill also. Very good switch into Beedrill. Drill Run won't be able to two-hit KO me. Um, and it's paper-thin defenses won't even like a Scald for my weak, weak, weak um, special attack. Uh, I think think it's looking like a good, a good team for me for his potential threats. And I'm looking forward to having the battle with him any minute now. So uh, let me know in the comment section down below what you would have brought. And if you think this team can do the trick. And... Uh, that's going to be it for this week, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.